And everywhere they stopped, they'd have to pop up shop. Right. And it was a pop up shop. It's exactly right. It's a Jewish pop up shop. <laughs> Hello and welcome back to the Croak and Crow podcast. I am Spencer Cardia. And I'm a doctor. Just a generic doctor? I have a, I have my doctorate. Oh, so you could be a doctor of anything. Yeah. You could be a doctor of psychology. Um, or anything fake. That's the most normal one. Or something fake like that. This <laughs> year is Frank dressed up like somebody. Uh, Frogman? Froppy the girl. Froppy the girl. Um, He's getting ready for Halloween. He is. It's it's mid October. Why don't he have his hood up? He doesn't want to. Uh, it he always, he's always covering his his head. It looks kind of scary, a little menacing, right. menacing froppy. All right, so take it off. No, I it's guess. fine. Let, ah, let it stay. Let it stay. It's already there. We're all wearing green. I don't know why. I feel like we always are. I feel like that's a color. Well, croak. We put the croak and croak and crow. Green and black. I said it doesn't have to do with frogs or crows, does it? I don't know. It can be with whatever you want it to be. You know, he's fro. Oh, froppy the frog. Yeah. Croak and crow. How you guys doing? It's been a long weekend without you, and I missed you oh so much. We've gotten to mid-October. We've gotten to the height of spooky season. Um, start thinking of your costumes. Yes. Oh, you have a frog in your hat, too. Oh, do my I gosh. really? Yeah, you do. Oh, oh wow. It's, it's all coming together. But, um, yeah, uh, great weekend. Hope you guys enjoyed it. It was a holiday, uh, whether you're celebrating Columbus Day or Indigenous People Day. Right. Um, that was on Monday. It was a full moon. It was a full moon. The hunter moon. Oh, which means? <clears throat> I don't know. They all have names. They all have names. This was the hunter moon. So if you guys went hunting, hope you caught an eight point buck or not. Hashtag Maybe Bambi. you're just hunting for compliments or something. Oh, hunting for humans. Or like doing a word search. Or hunting for rabbit treasure. Rabbit season. Yeah. What's like, that guy's uh, name? Elmer, Elmer Fudd. Fudd. I-, I should have been Elmer Fudd. Let's do it again. Okay. Hey, I'm Spencer Cartier. I'm Elmer Fudd. Nice to meet you. But um, yeah, so today's a beautiful day. Uh, Anything anything in the, the news or is there anything going on? I try not to look at the news Um, if I don't have to. I mean, I'm not, I don't, I don't hide my head in the sand like an ostrich. Yeah. Um, But so I'm not really sure what's happening in the news. Well, so we're all wearing green Um, and I think it's no better time to say Eagles are five and now. The Philadelphia Eagles the Philadelphia from the Eagles National Football League of the United States are five and zero. The only undefeated team in the NFL. They were the only undefeated team at four and now, and now they're sitting there undefeated five and zero. This Sunday coming up is a big game. Us against the our divisional rivals, the Cowboys. The Dallas Cowboys of the National Football League of the United okay, States. Okay, okay. <laughs> so, uh, so that that's exciting. It's an exciting time. The Phillies are obviously in the playoffs. They won their first round. Oh, yes. The so Philadelphia now, Phillies, which is the baseball. Yes, the Major League Baseball. Of I think another United team States. won, too. Um, yeah, a couple of teams won. No, no. I meant in Philadelphia. I believe the Phillies won, the Eagles won, and someone else won this past weekend. I don't know. A Phillies team. Flyers. I don't, I don't, know. No, I don't know. It's the only sports I keep up with. But, um, yeah, that's enough sports news. Um, back to you, Krista. Okay. Today's Wednesday, but this whole week... It has been the festival of Sukkot. Of Sukkot? So, I'm, I'm saying it. I'm trying to say it the way that... Fin, or not phonetically. You would say it, I okay. guess, as a Jewish person. Um, S-U-K-K-O-T. Okay. And... Um, it's been, a, it's been a, a big Jewish week, right? Last weekend was right. Yom Kippur. You were... In, yeah. Um, Yom Kippur, I believe. Okay, right. You're, you're absolutely correct. So the... Mm-hmm. Um, it's, it's the seventh month in the Hebrew calendar. Okay. It's, 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 I'm not even going to get into, because I'm not an expert and they're not looking for me to be an expert. Nobody, nobody even wants you to be but, an expert. But you're correct. You're not a doctor in, uh, in Jewish studies. Jewish studies. Or any of these. Okay. So the, um, you're correct. It's the seventh month in the Hebrew calendar. So other things did go on there. It's, they have a lot of, um, high holy days as they call it. Yeah. Um, and you know, we're familiar with the other ones. Because you, you you went to public school, like you get off, yeah. you know, you hear about them. Yeah. This is a big one, um, but you don't hear about Sakura? it. Sakura? S U K K O T. Okay. Sakot is an important um, one of their important. Actually, I, I'm not even like I said. I'm not going to try to figure to, to try to tell you what they are. But there's three big ones, and it's the third big one. Oh wow! Um, 
it's probably more even bigger than um than Hanukkah. Okay, now you're getting out of no, I'm control. serious. For, to them, I'm serious. But um, so to say what it is is going to be the word of the day. Oh, oh, that early, early on in the show. It yeah. is Wednesday, my dudes. Um, on Wednesday, as you know, if you've been a loyal follower, we do a little thing called One Word Wednesday. Where we pick a word and we talk about it. Uh, real world significance, chit the chat. Also spiritual significance. Looks like this word is doing half the job for us. <laughs> yes. Being that it is a religious holiday. So we're, the word of the day is Sukkot. 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 You, you pronounce it different every time. No. How am okay. I supposed to keep up? Okay. The word of the day is Sukkah. S-U-K-K-A-H. Sukkah. Sukkah. Sukkah Okay. For all my but Russian the, listeners. <laughs> but the holiday, the holiday is called Sukkot. I think it's just probably the plural of Sukkah. Okay. Okay. I'll let so you have it's a it. week long. It's a week long holiday. Okay. Called Sukkot. The main thing that we're going to learn about, and if you go on, the, you're on YouTube, or if you're listening to the to the podcast, go on YouTube to our channel. We have an example of a sukkah on, it's a YouTube short. An example of the holiday? Of what a sukkah is. And a sukkah is a temporary dwelling. Oh. Okay. So um, I saw one. So it's it's what like the Israelites, when they were traveling around before they... They had a home place in uh, Jerusalem, and they had the um, the Ark of the Covenant. Right. And everywhere they stopped, they'd have to pop up shop. Right. And it was a pop up shop. It's exactly right. It's a Jewish pop up shop. It's a Jewish pop up. Heck yeah. Shop. Okay. I'm, I'm I'm catching up. Okay. And so, um, if you don't live in a Jewish neighborhood, um, or you don't have access to go see uh, a if it, even if it's not Jewish neighborhood, you still might have access to go see a sukkah. Um, if not, or even if you do, but you don't want to impose, just look at our our YouTube short and you'll see what a sukkah is. And a sukkah is a temporary dwelling that they put up and it has, um, it has to have three walls. It could have four, but it has to have three. We, Two walls isn't cutting it. Um, I'm not sure about the super specifics, but basically if you had three walls, that means it's leaning up against your house. But okay. you could make like four. Yeah. Okay. And um, so you have to make this dwelling and then you spend as much time as you can in it for the entire week. And you're correct. It's it's in remembrance of the sukkahs that they had when they traveled yeah. for 40 years in the desert. Now, you said the Jewish people, the Jewish people, the Jewish people. And why? Because we also read the Old Testament and we follow along with what is going on in the Old Testament. Yeah. And we are completely able to be part of it. Absolutely. Adam and Eve and all that. Right. So it's interesting. Why do we not celebrate Sukkot? Jesus. Or wait, is it, is it a rhetorical question or do you have the answer? I have what I think is the answer. Um, okay. Well, if I had a guess. It's, it's food for thought. Why do we not celebrate the traveling and the dwelling. Um, I'm going to be honest. I, I'm stumped. I'm stumped on this okay. one. Okay. So, so um, I totally think, I, I think we just touched on it on a different year because it's called the Feast of the Tabernacles. And I could I could swear we talked to something about the Feast of the Tabernacles before. Maybe. Um, and I tried to go back, um, but I didn't have enough time. So, so you can do it. Go and go on the old YouTube videos of ours and find where I talked about the... Um, the Feast of the Tabernacles. The Feast of the Tabernacles. So the Feast of the Tabernacles is mentioned all throughout the Bible. So it's mentioned in Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Leviticus Deuteronomy, Numbers. Numbers. It is judges, in Deuteronomy. Um, um, Ezra, Zechariah, Nehemiah, ne One Kings. Two Kings. Two Chronicles. Three um, Chronicles. <laughs> okay. So... It's it's in the Bible a lot. It seems not, like okay. I it's mean, we killed an entire tree just getting all of the completely uh, accessible to us passages. And then you might say, okay, well, but it's not in the New Testament. It is in the New Testament. Well, what? Let it's, me just stop you right there. Go and see John chapter seven. Just read chapter seven. The entirety of it. Read the whole chapter seven, which is I think a page. Um, John four looks like John's the guy talking about it, and it's also in Revelation. Okay, we don't celebrate it. Can I ask why? <laughs> um, we don't celebrate it because uh, it's Christians have chosen not to make it an important um, 
holiday to celebrate. Okay. Of course, you would read all those verses in the Bible. You would be interested in it and you could do something personally, but they didn't decide to do it. So what I could I'm come tell up... you why. Okay, go ahead. Well, first things first, I'm going to say this. Mm-hmm. I, I think, yes, we read the entirety of the Bible, but I think Christians distinguish themselves with putting emphasis on God on earth. And so at first you're like, this is an important holiday and it is in the same Bible that we read. But I would go the other from the other way and say, what holidays do we emphasize? We emphasize Christmas, the birth of Jesus. We emphasize Easter, the death of Jesus. We emphasize Lent, which is, you know, 40 days between those, which is a time of repentance following the Jesus story. So I, I don't think that we don't recognize all the things that happen that leading up to Jesus. But I think our emphasis now as Christians is to focus on like the celebrations or, or the remembrances are all based around what what the Old Testament predestined and not right. so much let's continue celebrating. You know, like, uh, do you celebrate your conception day? Nah, it'd be kind of weird. <laughs> not comparing Jewish holidays to weird holidays, but you would not celebrate nine months before your birthday. If you told someone happy conception day, you would say that's kind of a weird thing to say. You would say happy birthday. It's Yes, everything was, was made and was on the way to becoming right. something. But the celebration that we're going to focus on, it, it's still, you couldn't be here. Right. You wouldn't be able to be born on right. your birthday without a conception day. But let's, for every year, celebrate the day of birth. Right. I love that. Um, what, what I picked up looking was that there are um, moral commandments and there's ritual or ceremonial commandments so when you do um uh, i'll put the uh all these bible verses in the description where you can find feast of the tabernacles it's not it's not even like you know how sometimes you say like oh it's hard to it's hard to understand it's really simple to understand because it explains feast of the tabernacles how to build the hut what branches to use um how many days to do it you know and everything like this um so it's a commandment over and over in the old testament There's ceremonial commandments and there's moral commandments. And Christians focus on the moral commandments. Yes. So when Jesus came um, to earth, as we say a lot, he said, you are too tied up in worrying about when to eat, what time to eat, who gets to eat at this table, what you should be wearing Mm -hmm. and where you should put your fork. Love is is the answer yeah love each other as i have loved you like yeah boiled it completely down so christians i'm guessing are like like you just said we acknowledge noah's ark but we don't have noah's ark day we don't have a commemoration of it yeah yeah it, it was all like and it's also sort of like you know self celebration not self-celebration but it's like uh once again i i i want to caveat this all with i de- like remember like remembering the the effort you know like the stories of the bible of how much dedication was put into um you know like continuing these lineages and and this this religion that came to where we are 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 all at now but it really goes to what is a holiday like like what is a day of celebration and that's like i'm not i'm sort of not against it depending on like how it's presented i think a a different religious person, maybe even a, a Christian themselves would say, why are you celebrating Lent? I know we talk about Lent in this podcast a lot, but there are a lot of Christians that don't not celebrate Lent. And you like, I, I think we even had a Lent podcast, but my argument's always like, it's not really a holiday. It's a personal thing. Right. To get myself in a headspace of, right. of focus and trying to live a life without earthly desire too much earthly desire and knowing that truthfully i can give up anything because i don't need anything besides you know god and stuff and so in that regard if it is a we have the, these shelters and it's putting you back in the mindset of right i'm willing to be without permanent shelter because god is my refuge right, right? like then that's a beautiful thing right so long and, and that's a, a, sort of the difference i think of holidays and these sort of remember like these uh, sort of 
personal remembrance days. Right. Is, it works and it's great if it's active, but it's it it's not really a holiday if it's not like Christmas. I I don't mean to take the Christ out of Christmas, but Christmas can just be celebrated. Right. With the underlying why are we celebrating it? Because Jesus was born on this day. It's right. a celebration. And then there's holidays that's like Lent, where it's it is great if you personally are using it to right. ground yourself. And this sounds like one of those holidays. Right. Yeah. I, I, I'm really I would love to do it. Yeah. And and I can do it. That's the thing I want to tell people as yeah. well. If you want to do um Sukkot, if you want to observe Sukkot, um, and you want to do it when the rest of the world is doing it, yeah. the people who do it, if this is the time you can look it up. Just look up Sukkot and the year and it'll tell you the dates of when everyone's doing it. And you can do it as as much or as little as you want. You know, some people are living in the tent, yeah. sleeping, eating, drinking, you know, working. Other people go in and out, you know, mm-hmm. and also depending on your temperature, you know, yeah. or or your money. Um, you know, super observant um, people who are doing Sukkot in, in places where like New York, where you, you live in a high rise, yeah. where are you going to put the thing? Yeah. And and you uh, on YouTube, again, you can look it up. They rent U-Haul pickup trucks oh, and wow. build it in the back, like... There's some people that will go all out to do it. And um, so I think it was really interesting. And why not? Because yeah. I do read the Bible and I do appreciate the message. And the message is what you said, that God is my shelter. Yeah. Um, also, they, uh, they, they teach or they remember or they lean on life being temporary. Yeah. This life being temporary. So this is a temporary shelter. Yeah. Um, also, the roof has to, the ceiling has to be made with branches. Even if you have waterproof over that, you have to be able to see branches and you have to be able to see sky. Oh. Not the whole thing, but you have to have at least a piece where you're seeing sky. Yeah. And um, so I love all of that. Yeah. And it's fine to, to want to be part of that, but Absolutely. not if you think it's a magical. Yes. Um, if I do this then I'm, how do I say? <laughs> if I do this, I'm in some way, ha- has God's favor. Or if I don't do it, like you yeah. didn't, you you put, yeah. you put the wrong amount of, you didn't put the leaves or you didn't, you know what I'm saying? Uh, because when I was looking up Sukkot, you can look it up very easily or you can look up so yeah. down to, there's something called a, um, Igra, Igra, I can't remember, but it's a, et- Etrog. It looks like a lemon, but it's not a lemon. Don't get it twisted. And if you use a lemon, don't get it squeezed. You're wrong because they have different seeds. Stuff like this, these kind of things turn me off. Yeah. Because it's like okay, it's. Yeah. No, I, mean, I, I totally agree with everything you're saying, and not you could keep compare it to Lent, but you know, compare it to what you know. And we had an entire Lent podcast, and I do implore you to watch it if you want sort of a more deep uh, seed explanation of what I'm saying now, but. Lent is the same way. You know, for a lot of people, Lent is just told what to do. Lent has levels. There's people that don't eat meat at all. You know, like that that observe all these things that are technically, you know, in the original do it. But then some people just, I'm not going to eat candy. Some people do like it can can be a small or as big. But the same way you said, I would love to do Surat. Anyone anyone can do Lent. It's it's like just... And it only it does, it's not a magical thing. Nobody's is condemned for not doing Lent. It is personally if you want that that if that will help you feel more connected. Yes. It, and in in this way, you know, if that helps you feel more deconnect disconnected. I was thinking about Lent today. I'm like, oh, I was thinking about what what I want to give up, and I'm like, when's Lent? It's so far away. It's like really these holidays or you know observances are a helping hand of. Do this now. You'll have the, the you'll have the motivation because right. you have a set timeline, or you'll have the um, camaraderie of your your people in your community are doing it together. But in reality, all of these things are can be done right at the same. It's I mean, like holiday. You can have a party whenever, like you can Thanksgiving. You can get your family together and have a, a beautiful dinner where you're thankful for each other anytime. Thanksgiving's nice because it sort of gives everyone a same date it plans it for you right and these plan it for you but the 
idea, once you realize that it's not about the day, it's about the personal like the personal benefit that you get right. from it. Right. And um and then a lot of people a lot of people find like I think a lot of these things like people don't realize that they might have interests that are sort of doing the same thing without realizing it. Like some people love to get disconnected and go camping. And it's like why? Like and maybe like in very in a very subtle way it's because I feel more like right at peace with everyone. You know, you see I, people I'll fall asleep under the stars. And all that. And it's like, you can always compare it back to like, that's what you're, that's what spirituality is. That's what you're doing. Yeah. And, you know, just the same way, you know, um, Jews are very observant about not doing anything on the Sabbath. Yeah. Of course, everybody could do that no matter what date it is. And it's just sort of like, I don't want to say a forced, but, you know, you are forced to do it. If meaning in a good way. Yeah. You know, same thing. Like maybe you wouldn't. I can't go camping or I can't take off or I can't, but if it's the festival of Sukkot, it's like, okay, well, we're going to kind of camp outside and we're going to get all these, yes. all these benefits. Um, the new Testament, which is we're Christians. So in, um, John, there's actually a part where Jesus, um, is going, the, everyone's going to the festival of the tabernacle oh. and, um, Jesus is like, I'm not going cause everyone hates me there. <laughs> and, uh, he, been there. he's like I'll, I'll go later or something like this and but the interesting thing and the thing that that i got as a christian was um in john at this time when the feast of the tabernacle so part of the uh, they're, they're remembering being in temporary shelters they're remembering the journey which was across the desert and yeah. um they had water and uh they had these clouds these magical clouds like we know about manna right yeah the 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 bread of the food that was being fed to them but they had these these um godly clouds that led the way it protected them it gave them um you know shade because they're in the desert and it led the way it told them when to stop when to go and at night they would be pillars of fire so it gave them there was more to that story of crossing the desert and sukkot helps you remember all of those things yeah but in the New Testament with John, um, they're talking about going to the Feast of Tabernacles and we have to remember that God gave us water and that God gave us light and that God saved us. Jesus, when he's talking to um, the woman, the Samaritan woman at the well, John yeah. 4, he says, I am, I'm the living water. If you, yeah. When you, when you, you can go straight to God. You'll never be thirsty again. I am the light. I yeah. am the life. And so as Christians, we we are so, like you said, we remember where we came from and we remember that journey. But we're so thankful that um, we no longer need even clouds or manna or... Yeah, or, yeah we because have, you know, we have like, you know, Jesus is in all of us. Right. And um, definitely, and, and it goes to both sides. And I would say... Back, you know, in in the Lent podcast that we had, I was saying that it's, which maybe was like this, where it even then had turned into like this festival yeah. thing, where it's like you're putting so much focus on the actual thing, right. and, and it's like it was never about that. It was right. about it was about your 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 self yearning for that. And with that being said, it like now with Lent, it's like you don't have to do it. And it's like he was saying, sort of like you don't need to go to that, like. That, that that whole thing is to get you more focused on right. God. It's I'm right here, and it's like oh well, we, we can't miss it. It's like no, but you can't. Don't don't lose sight of why we do these spir- these earthly spiritual things. Right. The earthly part is, is, is has nothing to do with it. So like when when God's there, it, it's like forget about the the earthly things that got right. you close to me. Yeah. I'm here. Right. And it's like you know, sometimes sometimes we do hold on to the earthly portion. Sometimes we hold on to practicing Lent and the entire time we don't think about God. Right. We give up, we give something up and it's like, oh, well, I'm doing it, I'm practicing. But it's like, what is the point then? Right. What, what is the point? Right. Like you can, you can, you can have a conversation with God without giving anything up. So if you're not doing one or the other, which, right. what, what's the point? That is, you, you know, you maybe remember the story again about um, John four with the Samaritan woman, because she tells Jesus, you know, she's talking about how, you know, she 
how they worship and and how this and that and and he and she says i know the messiah is coming you know and he's like i am the messiah yeah. <laughs> like he literally says it to her and also when you're talking it was reminding me you know there's huge huge, huge. uproar um now for like a month i guess with um you know, in the Middle East, the young girl who was killed because she wasn't wearing... Yeah, she I think, wasn't wearing conservative clothes. Yeah, correctly. And and a lot of people are rip, are cutting up the um, the burqas or whatever it's called and um, cutting their hair and so forth. And and absolutely understand why they're doing that. And But um, there's also the thing of like, don't, don't look at every person who's in a hijab that they are persecuted yeah. because... Uh, understandably if you're going to symbolically rip your hijab or throw it into the bonfire that's fine but it doesn't mean everyone has to take it off yeah doesn't mean the hijab will make god like you more yeah. no but if it's your choice that that this is how you like you know to to live on the earth then then you yeah. should be allowed to do that in a, in a totally unrelated holiday that i keep bringing up because i refuse not to lent you know okay. if, if it was forced on you and Okay, every year you're being told by your peers, you give something up. And then you, you give up soda one year and someone sees you drinking soda and they kill you. And it's like, no, none of us are giving up. And it's like someone is over there still being like, well, I'm going to give up this. It's, yeah, we're against two things. We're against forcing these things because that's wrong. Right. It's wrong on two levels. It's wrong for you thinking that you can you can um, uh, condemn someone or you can control someone. Right. And it's it's wrong because um, it defeats the spirituality of it. Right. But on the inverse, the person who is practicing it can <laughs> 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 the person who's practicing it fully well can be practicing it. For the, there are a ton of, of of women who in multi, in many co- I mean the the cover and the conservative covering is in basically every religion and culture, and um. It's can one hundred percent be personally big. I mean, you know, nuns cover themselves up. Right. Nuns have no dealings with men. Like nobody would be stopping them. Right. A lot of them do it for their own practice. Right. It helps them. Right. I'm 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 wearing these clothes. I'm doing these things um, for a specific reason. And so, I think be mindful of both sides. Don't let that blind you to the fact that there are a lot of people who right. are in still places of the world and cultures that if if they were in their full own devices would they still do it who knows right is there two sides yes but i mean and i think it, it, it's a shame both it, it's a shame because by forcing you know people to do certain things it ruins the entire thing right i always say that about lent right i, I think a big part of why lent is ruined is because it's presented the wrong way right I think a big part of why the hijab spirituality has been tar- uh, tarnished is because the way it's been it's been forced. people who 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 abused yeah. you know um, and, and, right and, yeah. the so, idea and, of it and so yeah. now you'll even have women who will look at the hijab on their own self and say I don't like what it represents I don't like what it represents yeah. and and they're they're right for that it's just a shame that something that in, in whatever culture could have been so beneficial individually right is now tainted because right. of the exploitation of others um it reminds me too of of the most recent problem with uh the catholic church mass when um pope francis said no more latin masses yeah and and the uproar that happened because people were were really losing the the blurring the line between we like it and we have to have it that way yeah. for certain blessings that's the yeah. way you know and he was like you're totally losing you you lose sight of the meaning right of what you're doing behind it's, it's all earthly like we live in an earthly world and the spiritual things come between and so it it does it, it doesn't matter what ha- what happens it doesn't matter if you say mass backwards it's the meaning still comes right. through and so to be to get so such a grip hold on the actual earthly things it's it almost it's counterproductive because you're you're you lose sight of you know it's like uh you know if you're looking through a uh a mirror not a mirror you're looking through like a screen and like you your eyes focus in the wrong place like you're looking at the screen 
You're not supposed to be. You're supposed to be looking through the screen. Right. Right. And it's like, yeah. No, we can't change the screen. The screen. It's like it was never about the screen. It was you're just you were supposed to. Right. Your, no, your, vision, your vision was supposed to be past the screen. Absolutely. Move the screen. Switch the screen. It doesn't matter as long as you right. can. As long as you're able to see through. Yeah. That's what matters. But that's our podcast. Um, go Eagles. Go build, build a sukkah. Build a sukkah and sit in it. There's there's really no. You're allowed. There's no. No, no one's, one's stopping no you. One's stopping you. <laughs> get out. Get outside and get in a little shelter. We'll be back tomorrow for Walkthrough Thursday. Be good. Peace. Thank you.